join me night and day. May I have a Christ on display. When we're weak and when we're strong, when it's hard to carry on, oh God, we want your love on display. Oh God, we want your love on display. Here we Good morning. We are gathered here today to join with Derek, Karen, their families and friends, both in person and virtually, to celebrate a very special occasion. In Genesis, the Bible tells us that God said, it is not good for man to be alone. And so he created woman to join him. Marriage was God's idea. He created it. It is a holy institution, one that brings much joy, blessing, and ultimately is a reflection of his desired relationship with us. Derek and Karen, today you are not just participating in a ceremony of words, paperwork, and signatures, but a spiritual moment before God where you are making covenant together. Let us pray. Father, we come before you today in Jesus' name. 
And although the circumstances around us are a little different and unique, Father, we thank you that what really matters is the love that Derek and Karen have for each other, is the fact that you have brought them together, and is the fact that today on December 19th, 2020, they can make a pledge of love and dedication and commitment to one another. And so we thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity that we each have to participate and witness this. Again, whether it's in person, whether it's virtually, God, we know that this is still a holy moment. And so we welcome your presence here. Holy Spirit, you are the guest of honor. And we thank you that you are just surrounding Derek and Karen with your love, with your presence, and that your power is present today as they make this commitment to each other in Jesus' name. And everyone agreed, said. Please be seated. I would like to now call on Shazia Mitchell, niece of the bride, to come and to read the scriptures. I were to speak with eloquence in earth's many languages and is in the heavenly tongues of angels, yet I didn't express myself with love. My words would be reduced to the hollow sound of nothing more than a clanging cymbal. If I were to have the gift of prophecy with a profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, and if I possessed an ending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that could move mountains, but have never learned to love, then I am nothing. And if I were to be so generous as to give away everything I owned to feed the poor and to offer my body to be burned as a mantra. Without the pure motive of love, I would gain nothing of value. Love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when someone comes to someone else with a blessing. Love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated. Love joyfully celebrates honestly and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing, believing the best for others. Love never talk, takes sign, failure as defeat for it never gives up. Love never stops loving it extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It is more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long after words of knowledge are forgotten. Our present knowledge and our prophecies and our prophecies are partial, are but partial, sorry. This is the word. Thank you. Thank you, Shazia. One of the honors that I have whenever I officiate a ceremony um, is that I have a brief moment to share the word. Uh, now, Karen and Derek have heard many sermons from me, uh, particularly Karen over the last seven years. Derek, not quite so many, but I expect him to hear many more in the, in the future. But I have this opportunity, uh, and it's a special opportunity, to share one last word with you as single individuals before you become one and you are joined together before the Lord. And even as Shazia read from 1 Corinthians 13, which is a powerful, powerful passage, and I love the way it's shared in the Passion Translation, which is what she read today. 
I wanted to build on that, and I wanted to take a few moments to talk to you about love. And I want to talk to you about the love of God in your marriage. Because love has brought you together. Love is what is going to bind you together as you go forward. But really, that love comes out of the love of God because the Bible teaches us that we love because He first loved us. And so even as we had some opportunity in our premarital sessions to talk about what does love really look like and what does the Bible teach us about love, I want to just remind you of a few of those things and encourage you in a few of those things before you make your commitments of love to each other. You will remember that we talked about the importance of understanding the difference between God's definition of love and what the world that we live in tells us that love is. See, in the world we're in, love is so often un- uh, excuse me, conditional. So often, love is based on what we do or what we don't do. And often the picture of love that we're given even towards others is, well, if they do this, then you love them, but if they don't do this. But the love of God is not conditional. God's love for us is unconditional. He just loves us. He loves us. He loves you. And I always want you to remember that, that as you walk in love towards one another, that's remembering that the love of God is the foundation, and that is unconditional love. In this world, love is so often about what you can do for me or what you can give to me. I will love you if you give me this or if you do this for me, and there's this connection. But God's love is not about what you can do for me, but God's love is demonstrated through Christ, is actually what can I do for you. It's not tied to what I can gain from you or what I can get from you. It's actually, but I have something to give you. And yes, it's unconditional, but it's also about giving. And so always remember this love, even as you build your marriage together, that if you ever enter into the place where you're looking more about what so-and-so can give you, you've, you've gotten off track with the love of God. But the love of God is not about what you give me. It's about what can I give to you. We also talked about how in this world we're told that Love is a feeling. You'll hear people say, well, I just don't feel in love anymore. I just don't feel the love anymore. But we talked about how God's love is not a feeling, but it's a choice that then produces feelings. And this is very important for us to remember because as we've talked about, feelings can come and feelings can go. But our choices that we make, especially choices of love for one another before God, can stand eternal. I want to encourage the both of you to always remember it was God's love that brought you to this point in your lives. It's God's love that has brought you together. And it's God's love that is going to keep you as you move forward into the future. In closing, I want to read to you from Romans chapter 8, 38 to 39. This also is from the Passion Translation. It says, So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that His love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken His love. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. Amen? I would now like to move to a declaration of faith. Derek, have you accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior and committed your life to His leadership and direction? Karen, have you accepted Jesus Christ as personal Savior and committed your life to His leadership and direction? Before these witnesses and in the sight of God, you are professing your faith in Jesus Christ until His return. This is not a product of religion, but is a true and living faith. If you forsake this faith, you break covenant with God. If you let this faith grow cold, you put at risk your covenant with one another. Do you believe this to be true? Today is a day that you will remember for the rest of your lives. It is the beginning of an exciting journey that God is calling you to walk out together. You are not just entering a legal contract today but a spiritual covenant before God. And before you make your vows to each other, I want to charge you each with several things. Derek, first I want to charge you, as the scriptures say, to love Karen 
as Christ loves the church. This is the standard and the example that has been given to us. And obviously, we cannot do this in our own strength, but through His strength, we can love our wives as Christ has loved the church. And so always remember that Jesus is your example. And you want to carry the same heart that He carries in this marriage. Secondly, I want to charge you to be a spiritual servant leader in this marriage. You'll remember that we talked about in our session about what does godly authority look like in marriage. And we talked about how godly authority is not about being in charge. Godly authority is actually about taking up the towel and serving. And I want to charge you to be that servant and to be a servant in this marriage to your wife and to the children that God will bless you with. And finally, in following Christ's example, I want to charge you to lay down your life to serve Karen. That is part of the commitment that you are making today. There never should be a day that you have and she goes without. Today you are making that commitment to serve her and to put her first. Karen, I also want to charge you with several things as well. I want to charge you, as the scriptures say, to love, honor, serve and support Derek. You both will remember in Ephesians where we looked about the Bible says that we need to be submit to one another. And so in as much as he is serving you as he's laying down his life for you, there is the same call for you. And it's a beautiful thing when a couple in Christ are both looking as how they can serve each other. I also want to charge you to pray for your husband regularly. There's a book that's been quite well known and popular. It talks about the power of a praying wife. And then there was a sequel that talked about the power of a praying husband. But there is something that strengthens a man in such a great way when his wife is praying for him. And last but not least, I want to charge you to support the dreams and mission that God has given him. His heart is going to be to serve and support you. And I want to charge you that you will have that same heart to support him to encourage him, to, to assist him in whatever way you can, and to build him up. Because your belief in him, your faith in him, your love for him, will mean more to him than anyone else's. And even if the world seems like it's coming against him, if he knows that you're in his corner and you believe in him, he'll be able to take it on with confidence. And so I charge this in you. And I also finally give a charge to all the witnesses, whether you're in person or whether you're joining us virtually, you are here today as witnesses of something that is powerful, holy, and eternal. God commanded man to leave his father and mother and join his wife in unity. And I charge you to do everything in your power to support, protect, and honor this union. I charge you to pray for this couple. I charge you to speak words of life over this marriage and that together we will support them and we will support what God's doing in their life. Amen? Derek and Karen have prepared personal vows that they would like to share with each other at this time. Karen, you're, you're coming into my life. It's been the greatest blessing. Brought, get a little closer, just so people can hear. Brought light into my life when I was at my darkest place. Pastor Brendan mentioned the power of your prayers. Your prayers moved the Lord to save me when I needed it most. I, I will spend my life trying to repay everything you've done for me. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm winging it here. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Brandon asked us to do a vow. It took me some time to figure out what I wanted to. Um, and I just going through our, uh, just our conversations uh, for the past couple of months. 
Um, and I remember the first time you told me how you felt, you said that I already had your heart um, in my hand. And I wanted you to know that I will always hold your heart in my heart. I love you, Derek. And I will always be with you. Awesome. I would ask you to hold hands, but you already are. <laughs> so I'm now going to lead you in the formal vows and ask you a question to which you can reply, I do. Derek, do you take Karen as your wife to love her as Jesus loves you, to protect her and honor her for the rest of your life? I do. Please repeat this after me. Say, I, Derek. I, Derek. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. Join myself to you. Join myself to you. To be a husband to you. To be a husband to you. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. We shall be one. We shall be one. Karen, do you take Derek as your husband, submitting yourself to him as unto the Lord, showing reverence to him as the head of this union for the rest of your lives? I do. Please repeat this after me. I, Karen. I, Karen. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. Submit myself to you. Submit myself to you. To be a wife to you. To be a wife to you. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. We shall be one. We shall be one. May we please have the rings. Thank you. A very important part of the marriage covenant ceremony is when you present each other with the token of your commitment, your wedding bands. These wedding bands are made of precious metal. This symbolizes how precious you are to each other and how precious your love is. These wedding bands are a circle. It's never-ending. And it symbolizes the never-ending nature of this commitment you're making together before God. You will wear these wedding bands wherever you go because they will be a sign to the world that of your love for each other and of the commitment that you've made of this day. And they'll always remind you of your marriage and of the words that you have spoken to each other. Derek, please take this ring, place it on Karen's finger, and repeat this after me. With this ring, With this ring. I thee wed. It is a sign. It is a sign of my deep of my deep and everlasting love. And everlasting love for you. For you. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Karen, please take this ring. Place it on Derek's finger and repeat this after me. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. It is a sign. It is a sign of my deep of my deep and everlasting love. And everlasting love for you. For you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Again, please join hands. Derek and Karen, as a representative of Jesus Christ, before Almighty God, in the name of the Father, His Son Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. I was starting to wonder if I may need to say you may stop. <laughs> we are now going to move to a time of signing the registry and taking communion together. And so I welcome the bride and the groom and their witnesses to come with us. And if you're watching or tuning in, just stay with us for a few moments while they have this special first moment together.
I think everyone will agree with me in saying that it was a beautiful ceremony. You are a beautiful bride. And you guys are laying the foundation for a beautiful marriage. I'd like to ask everyone to join me now as we pray a prayer of blessing over this new couple. Father, we come before you today in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you so much today for your love. Even as I've shared today about your love, as we've talked about your love, we thank you so much for your love. We love because you first loved us. And even as I said in my sermon that it's your love that's brought Karen and Derek to this point. It's your love that's brought them together. And it's your love that's going to carry them forward. And so I thank you for the obvious love that they have for each other. That is flowing out of the love they have for you and the love that you have for them. And so today we pray a massive blessing over this marriage. Lord, we thank you that you've brought them together, that you've called them, and that there's a purpose for them in coming together. And God, I declare over their lives that they will fulfill your purpose in their generation. Lord, I thank you and we declare that no weapon formed against them will prosper and every tongue that rises against them in judgment will be shown to be in the wrong. We thank you that they will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when they come, and blessed when they go. Father, I thank you and declare that you will meet all of their needs according to your riches in glory. Father, I thank you today for the children that you want to bless them with. And Father, we thank you, God, even as they honor you and follow you, that you bless their bread and water, you take sickness out of their midst, and there will be no barrenness nor miscarriage in their land in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you've, just, you've done so much for them to this point, but you are just getting started and that they are going to experience and see your goodness in such incredible ways in the days, the weeks, and the months, and the years to come. Father, we thank you for hope that rests over them, hope for their lives. God, that this is a, a day of hope. There is great hope for them. And God, they are even going to be a symbol of hope to many. God, that hope is something that they're going to carry, and hope is something that they're going to share. And so we declare this, and we thank you today. God, just as your word says that you are the God of all hope and that you cause us to abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for that overflow of hope, of joy, of love, of peace and all that you're doing through them. In Jesus' name. And everyone agreed with me said. Amen. Amen. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure today to introduce to you for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Derek and Karen Hafrin.